Obviously, keeping track of all this stuff is really important. And not just because it's nice to keep things organized and efficient. Failing to accurately organize your cap table can have major impacts on what happens to your company's authorized shares. For example, the SEC has a rule that allows companies to issue shares up to $10 million during a consecutive 12-month period. If you go over that limit, it triggers a requirement for you to do some big, expensive disclosure known as Rule 701 Disclosure. This can obviously lead to a bunch of different legal services and other costs that you weren't anticipating. So, you know, make sure you know about that. Now, hang in there with me, because at the end of the day, there's one key piece of information that's central to all these other interlocking pieces, and that's the strike price. Remember, the strike price is the price at which people who have been granted stock options are eligible to purchase their shares. In other words, you can't offer shares to people without knowing what a share is worth. So, Let's go back to our example from earlier. Remember the employee we gave shares to with a strike price of a dollar? Where'd that number come from? How'd the company know it was a dollar? How'd they know that that was a fair price for the share? The answer to that question is our last topic, fair market value, also known as FMV. The fair market value of your company, or FMV for short, describes the value of one share of common stock. This number, that's your magical number. With it, you can create stock ownership plans, issue shares, establish vesting schedules, and so much more. It's literally the sun that everything else orbits around. So, we know the FMV is a pretty big deal, but how is it actually calculated? The FMV is derived from a thing called a 49A valuation. This is basically where a third-party provider comes in, looks at all your books, and assesses your company's value independently. The name comes from a specific section the IRS's Internal Revenue Code. Take a guess. Which section of the code that was? Yep, section 49A. When you get this independent appraisal done, the IRS assumes it's reasonably accurate and fair, as long as it relies on accepted industry standard methods. So, let's quickly run through those methods. There are three key methods that a 49A valuation providers typically use. First is the market approach. This is where the 49A provider looks at the price that investors have already paid for shares in a recent financing round. Remember, in a price round, the investor typically gets preferred shares. So, by looking at the price they paid for preferred shares and doing a whole bunch of fancy math, the 49A valuation can ultimately derive a fair market value for common shares. And that's your FMV. Second up is the income approach. This is where the 49A provider looks at a startup's revenue and positive cash flow, if they have any, and also takes into account expected future cash flows. This approach typically applies for companies that have some traction and sales. Finally, we have the asset approach. This is where the 49A provider looks at the company's net assets, like equipment, for example. This approach typically applies for companies that haven't raised money and don't generate any revenue. This part's a bummer, but you do have to pay an independent appraiser for a 49A valuation. If you buy a standalone valuation, it could cost anywhere between $1,000 to $10,000 based on your company size and stage and a whole other factors. Or other companies, including us here at Carta, we offer 49A valuations as part of our overall subscription package. All right, you good? Still with me? I know. It's a lot of information. There's a lot to know. Keeping a cap table organized, so many different terms. Hear me out. Take a breather, go get some water, get situated. Natasha will walk you through how to build an actual cap table from scratch. Let's do this.